Thank you, Pastor, for the opportunity to preach tonight. If you all would stand, turn to Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. I'm just going to look at one verse right now to start with, and then we'll get into it after that. Exodus chapter 3, verse 11. Exodus 3.11, the Bible says, And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? I'll read that one more time. Exodus 3.11, And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? Let's pray, and we'll get into it. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Just thank you for all your many blessings, Lord. Thank you for this great night we've had so far, Lord. I ask to be, be with me now, Lord, fill me with your spirit. Help me to say exactly what, what you want me to, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may be seated. Moses is a very familiar Bible character that I'm pretty sure a lot of us already know about. So we won't go into great detail of Moses tonight, but in chapter 2, Moses was born. And Moses should have been killed right after his birth, but by a miracle, Moses was kept alive and he was raised. And after several years, the Bible or the children of Israel are held in bondage in Egypt under Pharaoh. And they begin crying out in their affliction. And the Lord hears their calling, and he appears before Moses. And he tells Moses that he, the Lord, is going to deliver them out of Egypt. Look at verse 10 with me. It says, Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, and thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And again in verse 11, Moses said unto, unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children out of Egypt? In verse 10, the Lord tells Moses that he will be the one to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. And if I could just imagine, Moses was probably a little dumbfounded, was probably a little confused at what God had just told him. Really, Lord? You want me to be the one that brings the children of Israel out of Egypt? And in verse 11, Moses says, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? Moses is questioning why God would use him to do this. Read on in verse 12. The Bible says, And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and there shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon the mountain. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and, and they shall say unto me, What is his name? And what shall, I, what shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. The Lord tells Moses that he's going to be with him this whole time. And the Lord says, When you bring them out, come to this mountain, and serve me. Moses responds by asking if the children of Israel are even going to believe him. And then the Lord responds again in verse 11, or in verse 14, and God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent, has sent me unto you. Tell them, I am has sent you. As the story continues on into chapter four, Moses is still hesitant. Go over to chapter four with me. We'll read a little bit here. Moses is still hesitant. Verse 1, And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, What is in thine hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand, and take it, take it by the tail, and he put forth his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand, that they may believe that the Lord of God, Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath appeared unto thee. Verse 6, And the Lord said furthermore unto him, Put now thine hand into thy bosom. And, and he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And he said, Put thine hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again, and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it turned again as the other flesh. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, they will believe the voice of the latter sign. The Lord gives Moses a couple different examples of his power. 
First off, Moses has a rod, and the Lord tells him to cast his rod on the ground. Moses casts his rod on the ground, and it becomes a serpent. And then the Lord tells him to pick it up. He picks it up, and it becomes a rod again. And then the Lord tells him to put his hand into his bosom. He puts his hand in his bosom, pulls it out, and it's leprous, white as snow. And the Lord says, put it back again. He puts it back again, pulls it out, and it's just like his hand was before. Now, the Lord did this not only to show that the children of Israel, not only to show the children of Israel that Moses was sent from God, but I believe also it was confirmation to Moses that the Lord was going to be with him the whole time and that the Lord is almighty. And even after this, Moses was still hesitant. Verse 10. And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. Moses said, basically, he's just not good at speaking. He's not good at talking. And the Lord responds to him in the, in the following verse in 11. And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth, or who maketh the dumb, or deaf, or the seeing, or the blind? Have not, have not, I, the, have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. The Lord tells Moses, he's going to be with him, he's going to be with his mouth, he's going to guide his mouth, he's going to give him everything that he needs to say. Now Moses went on, as the story continues, with the help and guidance of the Lord to deliver the children of Israel out from Egypt and to be used by God to do other great things. The Lord used Moses to do great things. But Moses wasn't really anyone special, or he wasn't really anyone great. Moses really, again, should have, he should have been dead after birth. But God had a purpose for Moses. God kept him alive. Moses felt inadequate in multiple ways. He didn't think he could do what the Lord was asking him to do. But the fact is, it wasn't really Moses that did anything. It was God. God did it all. Moses was an instrument, Moses was a vessel used by God to accomplish what the Lord wanted to accomplish. How many times can we feel the same way that Moses did? How often do we feel like we aren't cut out to do something that the Lord asks us to do? How often do we maybe hesitate and when the Lord asks us to do something because we're concerned about the outcome or we're concerned about what people are going to think of us, or the possibility of failure. Personally, I've, I've had this struggle, and sometimes I continue to have this struggle. If you would have asked me seven years ago, when I graduated from Franklin Central, if I could see myself on this platform, behind this pulpit preaching, I would have laughed, and I would have told you not a chance. If you would have asked me three years ago, when I graduated from Heartland Baptist Bible College, if I could see myself on this platform, behind this pulpit preaching, I would have laughed and said, not a chance. If you would have asked me at the beginning of this year when I came on staff, <laughs> if I could see myself on this platform preaching behind this pulpit, I would have said, only if the Lord leads that way and if pastor asked me to. <laughs> My whole life, I felt like I'm, I'm not good at speaking in front of people. That, that's just something I, I don't like doing. But... A passion of mine is music. I love music. If you ask me to direct a song, I'm there. If you ask me to sing a song, I'm there. Ask me to preach, all right. <laughs> now listen, I still get nervous to sing and direct. I still get nervous to do those things, but I'm more comfortable in that position. Now, I went to Heartland Baptist Bible College, graduated again three years ago, but I went there to study to be a music minister. The focus on my studies was music. I took Bible classes and I learned more about the Word of God, but I never really took any preaching classes, one, because I wasn't really required to, and two, that's just not what I saw myself doing. There were also opportunities in our dorms to give devotions. Every day besides Sunday and Monday, there were devotions in our dorms um, by a student. We had a sign-up sheet right by the front door, and... Basically, whoever wanted to sign up to give a devotion would sign up and give a devotion. There were several times I had stopped, and I looked at the board, and there were some open spots. Nah, and I kept walking. 
it's, it's, not, it's not what I wanted to do. Then it came to my senior year, and uh, your senior year, they give you a few special spots in the devotions where if a senior wants to give a devotion, they'll give you a special time to give a devotion. And my RA came to me, and he noticed I wasn't signed up, and he asked me, hey, you want to do a devotion? It's your senior year. It's just a short devotion, nothing special, nothing long, just a simple devotion. I thought on it, and I, I told him no. It's not something I felt comfortable doing. I never thought preaching was my thing. I thought there were people more qualified than me, people who could do it much better than me. I just, I just wanted to stick to music, the purpose I was at college. Now, last year, I was potentially going to take a music position somewhere else. And I was actually very excited about it. That's what I loved. That's what I wanted to do. But then a pastor called me into his office one night with my wife and basically offered us the internship position here at the church. Honestly, I was a little confused at the time because I thought I was going to be taking this other position. I thought everything was lined up. And now I have this option. And if I based it Thinking about the internship position, I knew I was going to have to preach at least twice a week, Sunday morning and Thursday night. And if I based it off that alone, I would have gave pastor an immediate no, and I said, no thanks, I'm out of here. But I knew that's, I knew that's not what I was supposed to do. So we, we took time to pray about it, and I really wanted to know what God wanted me to do. I didn't want to take a position just because I felt more comfortable with this position rather than the other position. I really want to do what God wanted me to do. So after prayer and seeking the Lord, he made it clear that we should take the internship position. And again, I knew that preaching was going to be a part of the thing. So from then on, I was just fully relying on the Lord. Lord, you're going to help me. You've got to help me with preparing these messages. You've got to help me with actually preaching because this is very new to me. But kind of like Moses, I questioned the Lord. Again, I thought it was inadequate to do what he was calling me to do. I thought there were other people who could do it better. I thought there were other people who were more qualified for the position. I had a who am I mentality. But something else that helped me is knowing that I am actually called to preach. Not necessarily to be a pastor, but I'm called to preach. And not only do I have that call, but honestly, we all, we all have that call. Matthew, Matthew 28, 19, and 20 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Now, this is the Lord's command to his disciples, but that command is for us as well. And for me, knowing that God has called us, has called me, it pushes me. It pushes me to be more willing. It pushes me to be prepared and to know that it's something that I should be doing because it's a command from God. And another thing that helps me personally is knowing that the Lord is going to be there with me through it all. Amen. Um, in the end of verse 20 there, it says, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So here's what I want to, here's what I want to challenge you with tonight. Are you hesitant to do something? Are you hesitant to maybe get into ministry or to tell others about God or to do what the Lord's calling you to do, whatever it may be? Maybe it's because you're, gonna, you're worried about failing or you're worried about what other people are going to think about you or it's something you're not comfortable with or it's something that just isn't your thing. A lot of times we fail to give these opportunities and these different callings the prayer that it needs because we're afraid that one, we're going to be put out of our comfort zone and two, that the Lord is actually going to want us to do whatever we're praying about. We fail to pray about it sometimes. But we must remember that we're doing everything for the Lord and with the Lord's help. We're just instruments and vessels used by the Lord for his purpose. We don't do it for the glory of ourselves. We do it for the Lord. And you could say, yeah, I understand that, but that still doesn't take away my nerves, and that still doesn't make it comfortable for me. Well, are you praying for the Lord's help? Have you forgotten that the Lord's going to be your side 
be on your side through it all. And honestly, it may never get easy. It may never get comfortable. But if it's what the Lord is calling you to do, you should be doing it. Just like Moses felt inadequate and uncomfortable with what the Lord was asking him to do, Moses still did it. And he was able to be used greatly by the Lord, but it started with him just doing it. So, what is it the Lord that what is it that the Lord may be asking you to do? Or what has he already commanded you to do that you maybe haven't been doing? Is it time for you to step out of your comfort zone for the Lord? I've stepped out of my comfort zone this year with preaching on youth nights and for Sunday school, and I'm, pre- I'm stepping out of my comfort zone tonight by being up here preaching. But I do it because that's what the Lord has called me to do. Whatever the Lord's calling you to do, teach a Sunday school, junior church class, sing in the choir, start coming on Saturdays for soul winning, being a better witness for God, whatever it is, you need to look to God, you need to pray for strength, and let God use you how he wants to use you. Pastor.